Hi, my name is Viral Chaya um, and I lead the global payroll and timekeeping operations as well as transformations for General Motors in the GPS. Um, this is my fourth role in five years with General Motors. I started leading global account payables and receivables, then uh, moved over to lead data strategy and set up that function for GPS in GM data strategy is a part of GPS. Um, you know, subsequently I uh, moved to take on this role, but in between I also was the People Services Operations Global Director, helping to scale up our shared services, HR shared services centers at uh, Manila and at Sao Catano in, in Brazil. Um, at uh, GM, GPS is uh, around six years old at this point of time. It resides as a part of the finance function. Uh, my, 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 my role, um, payroll, is a part of people services. Um, and, and, and therefore, while being a part of the finance function, our key stakeholder and partner is HR, and we work very closely, uh, we work very closely with them. Well, um, you, know, you know, from a GPS perspective, value can be measured in three or four ways, right? Uh, number one, clearly, you know, what is the, what is the efficiency or productivity that you are driving, uh, you know, helping deliver for the business? There is an element of expectation of, um, you know, uh, uh, a reduction in cost when there is a GPS play put in place, but uh, that is only the ticket to play. As you evolve in GPS, you look at other ways to, um, you know, uh, impart value, such as, you know, you will then move from, from just efficiency and productivity to effectiveness. How do you leverage end-to-end -end process chains to deliver true synergies and, uh, you know, true uh, uh, out variable and, um, you know, excellent outcomes? Um, how do you add value to the business? How do you scale up and become a real strategic partner of choice? So that could be the other element of value. A third element of value that we look at is clearly customer experience and employee experience uh, in, in, in either case. I mean, at the end of the day, who is the final consumer of the service that you provide? For us in people services, you know, employee experience is, uh, is, is absolutely the cornerstone, the central tenet of how we function. But at GPS in general, it is, it is customer experience and we are embarked on a very, very, uh, uh, you know, uh, aggressive journey towards uh, enhancing and improving customer experience to take it to customer delight at General Motors uh, GPS. And finally, it is in terms of operational risk reduction. How do we contain risk? How do we contain systemic risk? How do we contain operational and process risk uh, so that processes can perform in compliance and uh, under regulatory guideline under control? Yeah, so it's very interesting. Customers, um, you know, it is the it is the typical Cano model, right? What was what was a delight uh, a few years ago is an expectation now, and clearly, customers, whether they be internal customers or external customers, i.e., you know, from an employee experience point of view or an end customer experience point of view, um, essentially, customers are looking uh, looking to be known, know me as your customer, predict what I need, be proactive, preempt my needs and questions. In the, you know, in the old, old service model, um, your wish is my command used to, be the, used to be the dictum. No longer. Customers now expect, um, you know, predict my wish and, you know, take it as your command before I wish for it, right? Or, or sometimes tell me what my wishes should be, right? And, um, you know, at, at, um, at the GBS and GM, we are, we, we are doing multiple things. A, we predict. Uh, what are the trends that we see across seasonal trends that we see in terms of in, in, ter in terms of customer inquiry, employee inquiry demand, and we try to proactively pre you, 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 you know preempt those and provide those solutions in a very visible space. Uh, you know sometimes on the on the uh, company homepage. Uh, you know sometimes as mailers before before employees even you know think of asking for that. Um, you know the other things that we do. Um, in terms of in terms of employee experience, is, is 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 clearly create personas and you know qualify employees and customers within certain personas. All personas have typical traits, and therefore, if you cater to a certain set, of, if if you cater to a to to those traits, you are catering to around 70, 80 percent of customers or employees who fit into that. 
that persona. What remains is only the you know, peripheral needs and demands. And that is what we are doing. And the third thing that we are doing, of course, is currently um, in partnership with HR across the enterprise. Um, you know, we are embarked uh, on an on a, uh, enterprise-led big bank um, you know, uh, deployment around, around Workday. And what that will do is enable employees to be you know, self-serviced, self-sufficient, and therefore you know, take care of a lot of their needs very, very practically pro to, in, in, in a very preemptive and proactive manner so that they will not have to get in touch. There will not be a need for a contact and uh, you know, they, can, they can serve themselves. We, we, we benchmark in a number of ways. A, we benchmark internally with um, you know, similar operations that we have. Um, you know, payroll is a transaction um, operation. Uh, in finance, account payables in account receivables and transaction operations, and therefore, you know, just transaction op operation type to operation type. You know, that is one way of benchmarking. The other benchmarking that we do is that we are constantly in conversation with companies of equal size and footprint, um, or you, you know, companies in the same comparison basket, um, uh, such as could be could be could be Coca Cola. Need not be from the same industry certainly, but as I said, you know, companies of of, of, of similar impact and size. Um, you know, we talk very uh, often with Coca-Cola. We talk to Boeing. We talk to P&G, um, and we and we understand what their understand what their um, you know uh, uh, current benchmarks are, how they perform, how they operate, what their challenges are, and indeed what our challenges are and how we are overcoming them. Um, there is there is an excellent forum called the Conference Board. I don't know uh, I don't know um, if the, if the audience is aware of that a lot, but but there are but there are a number of uh, you know parallel tracks that they run. There's a, there's a payroll uh, related conference board. There is a, there is a HR related, finance related, f and related treasury. There are a number of um, you know, boards that they run where um, executive leadership from multiple com companies across uh, various industries come together with the express purpose of doing such benchmarking. And then finally, of course, um, you know, we use um, Hackett. Um, as, um, as our benchmarking partner and we um, you know, uh, uh, benchmark ourselves quite a lot to their metrics, their cost metrics, etc. In fact, you know, Hackett certified GM's payroll and timekeeping operations as one of the top three you know, best priced, best cost, um, and uh, best quality uh, performance uh, uh, operations across a comparison uh, benchmark group of manufacturing industries. Uh, we are we are we, we are making a lot of headway in terms of um, how we are using uh, RPA and uh, automation. Um, how we how we did it was we we started um, in, a, in a very embryonic stage at the initial stage we partnered with Automation Anywhere, but uh, that was four years ago. Now we are reasonably self-sufficient. Uh, we 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 do our own uh, development. Uh, we do our own production. So the development is done by by, by experts who have been schooled in RPA uh, coding and development and who reside within the businesses. And once that, once that is done, that is passed over for production, productionization to IT. And IT helps us productionize those uh, robots and then helps us uh, you know, maintain it going forward. Um, at, at this point of time, we have roughly $16 million worth of um, savings that have been delivered through RPA. We have further 61 projects um, in pipeline which will together with themselves deliver an additional $46 million worth of savings. So, so I, think, I, I think we are doing very good progress. In sure, what I'll be talking about is uh, in the track called um, you know, business services as end-to-end -end transformation engine. Um, and and we, we are going to be examining various facets of transformation as it relates to um, you know business processes, and certainly with business services, uh, housing end to end uh, you know process and process chains. How do you leverage the efficiencies and indeed the synergies in having an end to end process chain and transforming it and transforming it in various ways, transforming it through you know, process transformation or through systemic transformation or indeed as we were just talking about through automation and artificial intelligence to be able to deliver the maximum transformative value that you can create from that, from that operation.